Hello students, so we will continue our discussion on uh, chaos theory. So basically uh, we started in the previous class that uh, how a small change in the initial condition will um, yield a very unpredictable behavior of the solution right and uh, this um, chaos theory or uh, discussion related to such behaviors is what we are actually addressing in this chapter. So I will continue uh, the discussions and the topics related to that. Right. So, uh, if you remember uh, in the previous class um, uh, or one or two classes before, we talked about uh, this um, something called uh, uh, Lorentz equation uh, and uh, its uh, behavior basically that uh, how it generates uh, a very chaotic uh, uh, structure. So, if, uh, if you have x dot equals to let us say sigma times uh, y minus x and then uh, y dot equals to um, minus of x z plus r x minus y and then z dot equals to x y minus b z. Uh, so, here basically um, if we choose sigma equals to let us say uh, 10 and b is equals to 8 by 3 and uh, r slightly greater than 20. 24.74. So, these are all numerical results that has been obtained um, while doing some numerical simulations. So, for the parameter values, so here sigma r and b, they are parameter values for the system of equation. Um, the uh, for parameter values this uh, chaotic solutions are obtained basically. So, chaotic solutions are obtained solutions are obtained. So, we have already uh, looked at those uh, butterfly structure right. So, for a simple equation uh, of this type uh, basically um, it's, it does not look that complicated. Uh, we can still get the chaotic solution right and uh, the numerical integration of a lot. So, this is basically Lorentz equation. So, this is called as Lorentz uh, equation. So, the numerical solution of this Lorentz equation can be obtained using uh, Runge-Kutta method and uh, of course, um, uh, with, the, with, with uh, uh, the numerical simulations we can obtain the attractor and uh, the attractor is of uh, butterfly structure right. So, they are called this that is called as butterfly of Lorentz. So, keeping the motivation towards the similar direction right, uh, we will talk about uh, something uh, related to uh, uh, when the solution is actually diverging right and uh, that means uh, if there is a some very tight dependence on the initial condition right or sensitivity towards the initial condition that if you change the initial condition a little bit then in that case uh, the solution actually diverges or uh, so is, uh, chaotic behavior. So, that means uh, we always have some kind of uh, sensitivity towards the initial condition. And uh, we are going to introduce uh, or define the local divergence uh, based on that uh, uh, sensitive to um, uh, or, or sensitive dependence uh, to initial condition. So, uh, we have already introduced the local divergence. I am just trying to uh, recapitulate the definitions that we have uh, uh, that we have defined. So, local divergence is nothing but uh, we have already defined x dot equals to f of x uh, is said to be locally divergent is said to be. So, I am just uh, recalling the definitions and terminologies that we have already defined. So, that we can further continue the discussion divergent at x 0 right. Uh, if the solution if uh, the solution uh, starting at x 0 at x 0 and uh, the solution starting at at an arbitrary arbitrary vicinity right vicinity of x0 uh, diverges exp diverge exponentially so this exponential divergence we have already defined. So, the 
this uh, terminology that uh, if you start with uh, a point which is very uh, close to the initial condition which is uh, then in that case uh, the solution basically they will diverge uh, um, exponentially and uh, uh, this particular behavior is called as local divergence that means uh, a very local point we can consider so here we have x0 and uh, a very uh, a point let us say x1 which is sort of like x0 plus x, uh, epsilon where epsilon is any arbitrary positive number. So, if you consider any arbitrary point which is a local point of this initial condition then the solution can still um, uh, diverge and uh, this is uh, what we mean by the local divergence that the point may lie locally very close to the initial condition, but your solution might still diverge and uh, that is uh, this shows that how um, sensitive the solution is towards the initial condition that even altering the initial condition a little bit it can yield um, a, a chaotic behavior or uh, the solution becomes divergent right. And uh, in order to see this, um, uh, this this uh, arbitrary, uh, this local divergence behavior to uh, uh, in the um, uh, vicinity of any arbitrary point, um, we can actually linearize. So to complete the definition, uh, to complete the definition, definition, uh, we have to we have to specify specify the notion of this arbitrary point the notions of arbitrary point i mean how arbitrary are we taking arbitrary point arbitrary point and exponential divergence and exponential divergence divergence so, for that uh, let us linearize. So, for that let us linearize, uh, linearize around the point x0, around the point x0. Then we obtain, so if you linearize the solution around the point x0, so basically we will obtain x dot equals to j of x0, j is the Jacobian times x, right. Uh, we can have this vector notation, we are dealing with system. So, let us take the vector notation, we call it as equation number 1, where or with uh, j as the Jacobian of f, as with j as the Jacobian of the right hand side f. So, let j since it will be a matrix j x 0 have the eigenvalues have the eigenvalues lambda j and uh, corresponding eigenvectors v j v j for j running from 1 to 3 up to n. Um, let us take uh, lambda j is be different. Let us take that lambda j is be different that means uh, they are not uh, 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 equal that means that at, uh, no two eigenvalues are same. So, then uh, Vj's will be so that Vj's will be linearly independent Vj's be linearly so that Vj's be linearly independent right independent. So, the solution independent the solutions the solution of one with initial value so what is going to happen with initial value x0 uh, lies uh, lie in the uh, tangent space in the tangent space t 
tx0 right and this which uh, this linear this tangent space or this linear vector space this linear vector space has x0 as the origin which makes sense because we are starting from the initial value x0 so we take x0 as the origin and um, since 2.2 .2, uh, since uh, this equation where is that uh, this jacobian equation uh, equation number 1 since uh, 1 is linear since 1 is linear because uh, here uh, it is in terms of x dot so on the right hand side you have jx0 so that is linear with respect to so this uh, equation number 1 is linear with respect to uh, where is that? Yeah, equation number 1 is linear with respect to x. So, since 1 is linear, what is uh, going to happen is that uh, is linear, uh, we can describe, we can describe the growth behavior of the solution quite well of the solutions quite well because it is a linear equation. So, you uh, suppose uh, in case of system of uh, in case of just a scalar equation. So, you have um, uh, let us say uh, d alpha uh, or dy dt equals to some constant times uh, y. So, then in that case you integrate both sides and y can be written as uh, c times some x e to the power t. So, the growth can be um, described very well. We, we understand the solution, we can write down the solution and we can see how the growth looks like right. But you can write y t equals to some constant times e to the power t. So, in similar thing is happening for equation 1. Now, since any initial condition, since any initial condition initial condition x1 condition x1 in the vicinity in the vicinity of x0 um, can be written as can be written as it is very straightforward you can write x1 uh, you just write x0 plus to get that x1 you write the combinations of vj's multiplied by cj right. So, then you get x1. So, here I will write summation j um, then cj times vj uh, the vector sign. So, let us call it as equation number 2. Now, ok. So, the solution the solution of 1 with initial condition. Now, our initial condition is changed with initial condition x uh, so x 1 with initial condition uh, x 1 is given by now it will be changed is given it is given by uh, x 1 t equals to x 0 t plus um, summation j running from 1 to uh, n and then we have c j uh, v j e to the power lambda j t right. Uh, by the way, this x 1 t is the solution and this x 1 is the initial condition. So, though do not get confused that uh, here we have x 1 t also um, or you can put a small 0 here. So, let us go back and uh, just change the notation a little bit. Uh, x 1 0. So, that you still know that this is an initial condition right ok. So, here also I will uh, I have changed x 1 sorry uh, x 0 t plus summation j c j v j e to the power uh, lambda j t uh, right. So, let us call it as equation number 3. So, where x 0 t is the solution is the solution of uh, our original equation right the the solution with initial value x 0 where x 0 t is the solution of the equation uh, 1 with initial value with 
I initial value x0 with initial value x0. So, that means we are writing the solution of um, same equation 1 with respect to the initial condition x1 in terms of x0 right uh, with initial value x0 and uh, the solutions the solutions then the solutions um, the solutions x0 t and x1 t it is better to write vector notations and x1 t uh, x1 t uh, thus diverge we can now see how the how this uh, small sensitivity uh, uh, on this initial condition is actually happening thus uh, diverge uh, di not divergence does diverge uh, exponentially how exponentially how is that happening you bring x0 on the left hand side so then it will become x1 t minus x0 t right difference of two solutions take the norm on both sides or mod on both sides whatever uh, let us take the mod on both sides uh, diverge let us take mod on both sides so this will become summation j running from 1 to n i am bringing the mod inside so less or equal to cj vj uh, e to the power lambda j t right now as t tends to infinity if any one of the lambda j's are positive then this whole thing will go towards infinity right so diverge exponentially if any one of the lambda j's or if at least one of the lambda j's are positive See, so that means we have a very uh, uh, strong uh, dependence of the solution on the initial condition, and that this is what we mean by the local divergence. So, it's, uh, I mean, here we can see that it uh, diverges exponentially. So, as t tends to infinity, if I, at least one of the lambda j's are positive, then this uh, will diverge to infinity. Right. So, this is um, um, basically what we are uh, trying to uh, establish that uh, okay, we can call this as equation number 4. So, um, from the numerical point of view, uh, it is uh, also uh, quite possible uh, to see that I mean uh, if you if you simulate and if you change the initial condition a little bit, uh, it may be possible that your solution may not converge right. So, it depends uh, what kind of initial condition you are considering. and. Uh, uh, basically, um, the solutions uh, we can write the solutions, the solutions x0 t and x1 t both we established that they are the solutions right uh, x1 t and x0 t uh, of equation number 1 are tangent are tangent to the solutions to the solutions of the original nonlinear equation of the original original nonlinear equation nonlinear equation uh, x dot t equals to f of x right this was the original nonlinear equation um, original nonlinear equation I just have to see where is that yeah I did not give any number to that equation ok. What is the null linear equation this with initial values with initial values x0 and x1 right uh, x10 I think yes. So, the concept of local divergence is clear and uh, we obtain this entire uh, derivation by linearizing around the point x0. So, technically we are saying that x0 and x1 are the solutions of your original nonlinear equation whose initial values were x0 and x10 right. So, basically the solutions of these solutions. So, you can say that the solutions of um, the nonlinear equation of uh, the nonlinear equation 
nonlinear equation are set to diverge exponentially diverge exponentially to also to all right now uh, we will move to um, next topic. Uh, for example, uh, if you uh, if, if we consider uh, equation of uh, this type, let us say uh, uh, an example, example 1 for today. So, the logistic map. So, let us let us consider the logistic map of type the logistic map which is x dot or simply just x dot equals to f of x which is given by uh, uh, f of x where uh, the right hand side where the right hand side has the the derivative f dash x equals to mu times 1 minus 2 x right. So, basically we know that. So, it depends on both mu and x whether f dash x is greater than 1 or not. So, we know that uh, convergence to periodic solution occur, we know that we know that the convergence to periodic solution solution occur when mu is less than 3.57 which we call it as uh, or which we call it as mu infinity right and uh, for 1 less than mu less than mu infinity this map this uh, map sorry this map is locally divergent divergent near x 0 equals to 0 and x 0 equals to 1, but not at x 0 equals to half right. So, the stable periodic the stable periodic orbits are mainly located in regions without local divergence right without local divergence. So, basically uh, the logistic map, map which is uh, d x d t equals to some function of x, um, the local divergence can be established uh, when we check the derivative of the function. So, this we know that uh, when f dash x is positive uh, is, is greater than 1, when f dash x is less than 1, then uh, we can talk about the uh, local divergence of the uh, solution. And here in this case, um, uh, this f dash x greater than 1 um, that occurs uh, based on what values of mu and x we are choosing, right. So, we know that uh, it will converse to a uh, periodic solution if mu is less than 3.57, but when mu is uh, uh, um, this uh, between 1 to uh, mu infinity, then in that case it is locally divergent for initial values x 0 equals to 0 and x 0 equals to 1, but again it is convergent it is the at x 0 equals to half. So, depending upon what you see how close these initial conditions are 0 and 1 at these two points it is divergent, but if you consider half then it is convergent right. So, a small alteration in the initial condition is giving you a divergent solution right or locally divergent solution.
So, like that there are many examples uh, we can uh, get into the definitions or we can just uh, learn these topics um, by one example itself. Okay. Now, uh, we define something called uh, Lyapunov exponent. So, Lyapunov exponent uh, talks about, uh, so let us go to the next page. So, Lyapunov exponents. So, we have already, we have already learnt about the chaotic behavior, about the chaotic behavior of the solution and uh, that it is characterized, that it is characterized by sensitive dependence on the initial condition on the initial conditions that means two solutions two solutions which start very close to one another which start very close to uh, one another close to one another rapid rapidly diverge from each other rapidly diverge this is what we mean by exponentially right rapidly diverge from each other and it is intuitively it is inti, intuitively clear that this may happen right if the system if the system is locally divergent uh, along an orbit right along an orbit. However, it is not clear, however, it is not clear in advance whether um, the, this local divergence has to apply everywhere in the orbit, has to apply everywhere along the orbit or not, right. So, this from beforehand, we do not know that this local divergence will, hap will happen uh, everywhere in that orbit or this is just for choosing two solutions, uh, two initial conditions very close to one another uh, in that orbit, right. So, this has to be uh, made clear that uh, under which conditions uh, this local divergence do happen, uh, does happen, right. And uh, that we want to sort of uh, clear out that uh, looking at the uh, solution or looking at the initial condition or two initial conditions, uh, whether we can say that the solution can be locally divergent or not, right. So, that has to be established that it whether it happens along the uh, everywhere in the orbit or just uh, at some chosen particular points. So, that we will see in this uh, section. So, um, I will continue the discussion on uh, Lyapunov exponents and then we will move to uh, strange attractors uh, 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 in our next class and uh, yeah, then uh, that will be uh, the end of this chapter. So, we will uh, continue our discussion on Lyapunov exponents um, in our next, uh, next class. So, thank you for your attention.